Hey folks, we are here at Spoonfest 2019, uh, catching up with some of the amazing craftspeople and instructors and makers that are here and the stuff that they're doing and bringing you some of the stuff that's going on. And I am here with Sean Hellman. Uh, Sean is a very experienced Greenwood worker, spoon maker, uh, yes. writer of Greenwood workbooks. Um, and most recently, more recently these days, kind of tool maker and yes. sharpening yeah. expert. Is that fair? Is oh, that... I've been teaching sharpening here for, for what seems like decades now. Yeah. But <laughs> it's definitely um, been your focus at Spoonfest, it seems, teaching because... lots of sharpening workshops. and Absolutely, because it's yeah. really necessary. Uh, yeah. people, it's something I struggled with terribly. And everyone seems to struggle all the time mm. with sharpening. Yeah. Um, it's simple. Sharpening is really simple. Yeah. Uh, but the problem is our body tends to uh, be all wobbly and jellyfish-like, right. and that's where it all goes goes wrong. Yeah, totally. But, uh, it's definitely a thing that um, everyone should be trying to put a lot of focus on. Getting yes. good at sharpening is, yeah. is a kind of... Yeah. Uh, foundation, isn't it? Then absolutely, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Brilliant. Sharp tools are essential. Yeah, great for, for good work. So you're going to show us um, a particular technique relating to spoon knives. Is that right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, and it's something that uh, most spoon knives tend to get worse and worse and worse with over, mm. over time, and so we're getting a more obtuse edge right. uh, or obtuse grind on our knives yeah. and so if we have a really obtuse grind it just sort of forces its way through the wood yeah. and it's not cutting it's splitting yeah. Yeah. and so we tire a lot a lot quick uh, a lot quicker yeah and we need a really quite an acute edge on our spoon knives something right. from about 20 to 25 degrees right but unfortunately it's really difficult to measure even with uh, nice little metal protractors like this, it's really yeah. difficult to measure the uh, bevel angle because it's a convex angle that we're measuring. Right, yeah. And then there are no flats, and it's just right on the very edge that we need to measure. Yes, yeah, I'm with you. So wh what is it you're going to show us now with the spoon knife to help combat that kind of thing and improve sharpness? OK, we're going to essentially hollow grind the inside of our spoon knife. Um, so we can have a completely flat inside which yeah. makes sharpening so much quicker and easier. Amazing. Well, I will hand you over to Sean and let you take it away. Lovely. Thank you. Brilliant. The main problem with manufacturing hook knives is as soon as we start bending the metal round, it uh, convexes on the inside and concaves on the outside. So we never have a flat inside of a hook knife. So immediately we've got a bevel. So if I was to lay this uh, protractor across the flat here, there is always some rock and you can see that it is domed, especially at the big curve. It's always a little bit difficult to see, but if I lay this straight edge across here, you can see there's a dome here. Um, I will sh show you another way in a minute to determine just how big that, that dome is. Uh, so this has um, made an internal bevel here. So if we sharpen the outside to, let's say, 20 degrees, we may well have a 5, 6 or 10 degree bevel on the inside. And a 30 degree bevel on a spoon knife is actually getting a little bit too much. We're ideally aiming from anything, if the metal can take it, 20 plus degrees up to about 25 degrees or so. Um, there's no right angle. It depends on the quality of the. Uh, it depends on the quality of the metal. Um, you can see that I'm using a little light here um, from my battery pack. Light is really important for sharpening. If you, you really need as much light as you can possibly get, so spotlights really help. So I'm just going to get my black marker pen, or it could be a blue marker pen, red marker pen, it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to black out some of the inside of this, just to show you just how much it is actually domed on the inside. 
marker pens are really useful for sharpening because they're in a, a quick, immediate way of seeing where you're abrading. So I've just blacked that out. I'm just going to let it dry for a moment. And uh, let's get this right up here. Okay. Uh, another important thing when sharpening is sharpening at the right height and when I'm sharpening um, hook knives especially I'm usually working at chest height um, this is just actually maybe a little bit tad too high and ideally I want to be at about this level or so here don't work down bend down and work on the bench like that you're going to lose all control you want your body to be uh, uh, rigid and as tight as possible and you will notice that as I'm working my elbows are right in, my wrists may be right against my body and I've got complete control and I tend to move my body rather than move my arms like this. If I move like this I've got big movement all over the place. A little movement in my elbow up and down can equate to huge movement here at where I'm sharpening so I could be sharpening a uh, far more obtuse bevel. Right I'm going to use this little diamond file here and I'm going to keep it as uh, straight and as parallel to the ground as possible and just rub it over the inside just to see how much of a dome there is and I'm mainly working on the back edge, the spine edge of the knife at the moment and it's definitely uh, domed. Yeah. You can see that uh, it's abraded beautifully next to the spine but the black marker pen is still near the edge and this shows us that there is a dome or a convexing on the in inside of the blade and I've just done this with this uh, Ben Orford one and you can really see that uh, it's uh, very uh, it's shiny and abraded near the spine but uh, all the black marker pen is near the edge. So when we come to sharpen this we've, uh, we've sharpened the outside we've got a nice convex on the outside and we come to sharpen the inside so instead of the abrasive being flat across the whole of the knife, we have to actually lift the abrasive up and create another bevel on the inside. Unless we're using very fine abrasives, this bevel is just going to grow steeper and steeper over time. And so we get a more obtuse bevel. So from, let's say from 25 degrees, we go up to 30 degrees, maybe 35 degrees after a load of sharpenings. 35 degrees will just force its way, split its way through the wood. And we're using so much energy to get the knife through the wood. We tire really quickly. And when we tire, that's when accidents happen. So what I'm going to show you is how to grind out, how to hollow grind the middle of this knife and this Mora knife and this can be done on most knives, most hook knives out there for sale. Um, I would probably say don't really do it on a Robin Wood knife because they're really quite thin anyway. You can do a little bit but you do too much and you'll grind away all the metal and there won't be anything left. You'll just make the knife too weak. But uh, this Ben Orford and this Mora knife there's plenty of metal here to, to grind away. So what I use is uh, just a Dremel. And you don't need a flexible uh, shaft on the Dremel. You could just put uh, a little round burr like this on the end of the Dremel. I have used um, cordless drills. I've used pillar drills. It's anything that can hold a small, um, a small round burr. For bigger knives, we can use uh, bigger burrs, but I would certainly wouldn't want to use something this sort of size on a knife this this wide because I'm going to. It's so easy to go too near the edge. But these little burrs are really cheap and easy to buy. So 
if you've got variable speed control. Uh, I tend to use speed control because at full whack, this is going round really very fast and heats the metal up incredibly quickly. So I just take the speed down a little bit and I make sure that I'm working at a good height. I pull my body right in. Everything is tight to me and I'm just grinding in the middle here. And you can see there are a few sparks occasionally coming off. Um, I couldn't quite see what I'm doing, so I'm, uh, I'll just get this black marker pen and just black up the inside of the blade again, and then I can really see, and more importantly, you can see exactly where I'm abrading. Right, I'm going to stop now, turn it off. And feel, this is, this is beginning to get warm. It's not got too hot. The last thing you want to make is, it, um, is to do is to make it so hot that you can't hold it like this for a couple of seconds. If you do, you could be heating the metal up too hot so that it changes the temper. In other words, you'll be softening the metal and it won't hold a durable edge for very long at all. If it does get too hot, just get a pot of water and dip in and make sure that everything is uh, cold. If you don't have variable speed um, on your Dremel or your drill, you're going to have to keep feeling and dipping a lot more often. Right, you can see I'm beginning to go a bit nearer the edge. What am I? About two mil away from the edge. If it's really crowned, and this, uh, this knife isn't that badly crowned, I may want to go a bit nearer the edge. And then I want to work back towards the spine as well. Right, I'm actually pushing quite hard with this Dremel. I'm not just lightly playing it over the surface. I don't want to be here forever, so... Oh, that's getting a bit hot. It's still fine, but let's cool it down. Right, and where did that, uh, and it's exactly the same with the Mora. It's mainly, it's mainly in the, uh, in the really curvy bit that you've got to work on. It's not quite so important up here, but definitely down here. Uh, something I haven't mentioned before, you can see a lot of sparks going up towards my face. If you don't wear spectacles, wear safety glasses. You really don't want a little bit of metal going into your eye. Okay. I have uh, ground out the centre of this hook knife here and I'm going to be using this uh, bit of wet and dry paper, which is probably about 320 or 240 grit. 
Um, and I'm just going to rub it along the whole of the back or inside of the knife. It's really important to move the paper away from the edge. Don't pull the abrasive into the edge because you're just going to cut the paper. And I'm twisting the dowel around a little bit and pushing it across the spine and the edge. The one thing I'm not doing is pushing everything across like this. And the reason why is it is so easy to lift one end of the dowel up and create a, um, a bevel, an internal bevel. So just twist the dowel around, moving up and down or along the edge. Okay, that's not looking too bad. Uh, I notice there's a little bit of rust pitting or pitting in the edge here and up there. It's a part of the knife that you may not use that often. Unfortunately, my eyesight is failing a little bit and one of the most important aids is a, a, a little loop like this. This is a 30 times loop. I often use a 40 times uh, loop that's got a, a slightly bigger diameter lens that I find a bit easier to use. Some people find loops very difficult to use, but the best way to use them is to grab them between, hold them between your thumb and four fingers like this, and bring your thumb up to the bridge of your nose, and then you bring the tool up, and I use my little finger to help focus. And I can really now see exactly what is going on with that edge. And just at the top there, it's actually right on the edge, it's fine. The pitting is just a little bit further back from the edge. And so what I'm going to do now is go to a finer abrasive. And actually I'm going to black this out first. Just to double check. You can see that I'm really keeping my arms and everything in really tight. You don't want to be flopping about at all. Right, you can really see clearly two tram, two bright tram lines either side and it's dark in the middle where I blacked up and uh, you can see where the hollow is very well, very nicely. Okay, so as long as I keep my abrasive flat and in contact with either tram line, I'm going to get a nice flat surface. And so I now know that this is completely flat across and uh, all I need to do now is to work with some uh, flat slips on the outside. I'm very much looking for the scratch marks and I tend to run along the edge a little bit rather than pulling directly off the edge like that. I find I get far better control and I'm working from up by the shoulder down to the edge rather than putting the abrasive directly on the edge and hoping I get the right angle. So if I start near the shoulder or on the shoulder, I can see where I'm scratching or abrading and then I can just adjust it slightly down to the edge. We can use a black marker pen on the outside as well, but what I tend to do now is I just change the direction I'm pulling the abrasive over. So I've now got scratch marks running in that direction 
and then if I go along the edge like this, I can really see, you can see that just back here, that it's really polishing up nicely because the scratches are going in opposite directions. I can really easily see where I'm abrading. You can see it's getting really shiny right on the shoulder there and I'm not working on or near the edge. So I just adjust my position and I'm working very much nearer the, oh, I'm almost on the edge up here now. And yes, I'm right on the edge now. This really does avoid me going at too steep an angle, which you don't want. The problem with a lot of sharpening um, I've found from um, running all these sharpening workshops is that people are in a hurry. And so if we just make the angle a little bit steeper, we get to feel this little burr on the other side. And so we think we're, we're actually sharpening quicker but all we're doing is just making more and more work for ourselves. We're just increasing the angle, bevel angle from this to this to this. And it's, we're just making a wedge that forces its way through the wood rather than a fine cutting edge that leaves a superb surface. So don't be tempted to increase the bevel angle just to get it sharper quicker. We're just going to carry on and strop the edge. So I use a leather strop with uh, um, polishing compound. It doesn't really matter what sort of polishing compound is it you use as long as it gives a mirror finish. And again, with all my stropping, I actually put a fair bit of effort into it. I really am pushing down quite hard. I hear a lot of people say, oh, just touch the strop lightly onto the tool and just play it over. But I found that that really doesn't polish as good as we need to. And you look, uh, you look at the edge and it really hasn't taken all the fine scratch marks out. And then I do exactly the same with a round strop on the inside. Keep it flat and I'm just rolling it off the edge. I'm pushing it over the edge. I'm definitely not pulling the strop into the edge because I'll just cut the strop. And you can see here all the uh, metal particles being abraded off. And uh, that's now reasonably sharp. This is a quick demonstration. I would like to spend a lot more time. But what I wanted to show you was the technique of hollow grinding and this will improve our sharpening and give us a far far superior tool than if we carried on sharpening at an angle on the inside. <laughs> Amazing. Um, thanks for that, Sean. That's uh, really valuable, I think, for people to see that and to understand that concept of how important that inside Absolutely. surface is with yes. spoon knife sharpening and anything that can help um, make sharpening spoon knives quicker and easier. And just helping that understanding of yes. what the geometry yeah. is and actually what's going on. Yeah. And I think even if you probably don't have a Dremel, even just knowing that the kind of, even if you're just working on honing away, yes. that's that kind of concept of what yeah. you're aiming for, right? Yeah. And avoiding that yeah. steepening of it. Basically, if you haven't hollow ground the inside, only use a thousand grit or finer uh, abrasive on the inside and try to keep it as flat as possible. We don't want to make a, another angle on the inside of a hook knife. Yeah, totally. Brilliant. Well, that's been amazing. Um, you can check out 
Sean's work on his website and Instagram. We'll have links to those under the video. Yes. Um, you've got a new book in the works, I think. I have. It's been uh, many years in the making. It's called Sharp. And with any luck, it may be out before Christmas, but probably after Christmas sometime. But it'll be on social media. It'll be on my website. We're self-published, Crafty Little Press. You can't get it through Amazon. You will only be able to get it direct from us. And a few select um, shops, the Woodsmith Experience, Woodland Craft Supplies, and North House Folk School in America. There you go. Check out the other videos we're doing at Spoonfest, and I'll see you later on. Cheerio.